All right, so we're diving deep today into a case that really shook the music world, the legal saga of rapper Young Thug. Yeah, it's a, a complicated one for sure. It is, and you know everyone knows Young Thug, or Jeffrey Williams, his real name. Right. He was at the center of this huge R.I. key case down in Atlanta. And it seems like there are these two totally different stories going on. Yeah. You've got the prosecutors saying he's leading this violent gang. And then you have young thugs saying he's just an artist who got caught up in the wrong scene. Absolutely. So we'll be looking at all of it. We'll unpack how they use his own lyrics against him in court, this really controversial plea deal that he ended up taking, and really what it all means, not just for him, but for the future of the music industry as a whole. This case, I think, really captured everyone's attention because it raises all these questions about where do you draw the line between art and real life? You know what I mean? Right. When does free speech cross over into criminal intent? And, you know, just how complicated this all was. I mean, the trial itself was the longest one in Georgia history. That's incredible. <laughs> it is. Let's start off by just breaking down these REIO charges, because we hear about them a lot, especially it feels like in the hip hop world. It does, yeah. But what exactly are we talking about when we say ARCO? So ARCO stands for the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act. It's basically this legal tool that lets prosecutors go after an entire criminal organization Okay. instead of just going after one individual. So think of it like this. Instead of arresting just a single mobster, they go after the entire mafia family. Wow. And in Young Thug's case, the argument was that his record label, Young Stoner Life, YSL, right. was actually a front for this dangerous gang right. called Young Slime Life. Also YSL. Also YSL, right. And they were saying that this group was involved in all sorts of serious crimes. We're talking drug trafficking, armed robbery, even murder. So you've got this double meaning of YSL, a record label, but then this alleged gang. Mm -hmm. How did they try to tie Young Thug, the artist, to all of these alleged crimes. Well, a lot of their argument focused on his nickname, King Slime. They said it wasn't just a stage name, it was actually proof that he was the leader of this gang. They pointed to his social media posts, his music videos, even specific lines from his songs to try and prove he was involved in gang activity and violence. I see. So like what, what kind of lyrics did they use? Well, for example, in one song, Young Thug raps, I'm the general, I run the troops. Oh, wow. So prosecutors argued, you know, he's not just telling stories, he's confessing to actual crimes. Which brings us to this really controversial issue of using rap lyrics as evidence in court. Why is this so debated? Well, a lot of critics say that using lyrics this way is just inherently unfair okay. and that it could even be racially biased. They point out that rap music relies heavily on storytelling and exaggeration. It's braggadocio. It's meant to be art, not a literal confession. Right. And they're worried that this sets a dangerous precedent because you could end up punishing artists, especially hip hop artists, for their creative work, even if there's no actual proof of them committing a crime. So what was Young Thug's side of all this? Did he completely deny everything? He and his lawyers always maintain that YSL was a legitimate record label. It was just a group of artists, you know, friends. And they said the whole slime life thing was just a shared lifestyle, you know, an image. Yeah. They admitted that, yeah, Young Thug was involved with gangs at some point in the past, but they insisted he wasn't a leader. He didn't plan any of the violence. Their argument was basically he was just a successful artist who happened to come from a really rough background. And his music, they said, reflected that reality, but it wasn't like some instruction manual for criminal activity. Right. So... In the end, Young Thug took a plea deal to avoid a trial that could have sent him to prison for a really long time. Yeah. Can you break down that plea deal? What were the terms? Why do you think he decided to go that route? The plea deal was pretty complicated. The main thing was he avoided any jail time, but he got 15 years of probation. Yeah, so he'll be under pretty strict supervision. He'll have to check in regularly with a probation officer. He can't even travel to his hometown, Atlanta, except for certain family reasons. And he has to do hundreds of hours of community service. What kind of community service? It's going to focus on anti-gang and anti-gun initiatives, you well, know, probably trying to steer young people away from that life. As for why he took the deal, it probably came down to risk. I mean, if he was found guilty at trial, he could have been facing a much harsher sentence. Yeah. You know, the, the prosecution had a lot of evidence against him. They had testimony from some of his former associates, and the stakes were just really high. This whole case, it feels like it sparked a lot of debate about the future of music. Mm -hmm. Do you think we're going to see prosecutors start scrutinizing artists' lives and lyrics even more after this? 
It's definitely possible. I mean, prosecutors might feel like they have a green light now to use these same tactics, especially in cases involving artists who have controversial lyrics or any kind of alleged gang connections. Yeah. But, you know, there's another side to this. This case has also shown a huge spotlight on the issue of free speech and music. Yeah. And I think it's forced a lot of people to start thinking about how the justice system should be interpreting and using artistic expression, you know, as evidence. So, you know, maybe this could lead to more awareness and sensitivity around the issue and maybe could actually push back against this whole trend of using lyrics against artists. So it's kind of hard to tell where things are headed, really. It is interesting, though. Young Thug has said that he wants to use this experience to make positive changes. Mm. What are your thoughts on what he might do and just the overall impact of this case going forward? It's tough to say what the future holds for Young Thug. Yeah. But there's no doubt he's a talented artist and he has a big platform so he could really use this experience to speak out about criminal justice reform or maybe even mentor some young people who are dealing with similar challenges to what he faced growing up. But, you know, bigger picture, this case really highlighted the complicated relationship between art and the law. And it forces us to ask some tough questions. You know, where do we draw the line on free speech? What responsibility do artists have to their communities? And how should the justice system handle creative expression? These are all things we need to keep talking about as a society. This deep dive has been eye-opening, that's for sure. You know... This case may be legally closed, but the ripple effects, I think we're going to be feeling them for a long time. And it leaves all of us with some questions to ponder. How do you think this case might shift the way we look at the connection between art, free speech, and the law? What obligations do artists have to the people they influence? And how can they use their platforms effectively? These are all vital questions to consider as we navigate this constantly evolving world of creative expression and how it intersects with the legal system. A lot to think about for sure. We'll have to leave it there for today. Until next time.